got um, the Rosa Palustris, and these are great um, rose hips with this with the five sepals and then all the old salmon and great rose hips. Um, we've got good stipules on the leaves. This one, you can really see those stipules. And um, this one's weird in that the, the thorns are actually deciduous. So this one's actually lost its thorns already. Um, okay, so there's the good rose of palustras. We've got the little buttons. Uh, so cephalanthus or button bush. Um, we've got right here, Ilex, Particulata. We, we should have saw this the other day. Um, and it's really easy because it's got these red berries. So it's Michigan Holly and it is the same genus as the Holly that you'd put in your yard and the same holly that you'd use at Christmas, but it's a different species. This one is deciduous, but the, the, the berries will turn brighter red in the next week or so. And um, the leaves are fairly, I, I would know it just by the berries, but the leaves are fairly distinct. Here's a good one. It's got what's called a cuminate tip. So it looks like someone pinched it. The serrations point down. And then what's weird is if you cut this in half, it's actually fatter on the bottom half. That's unusual. Now, not every leaf does that, but some of them do. So it's a it's a good thing to kind of look for and see. You'll see some of them don't do that as much. And not all of them have the good accumulate tip, but you can find a few that, that do. So Ilex reticulata. Um, I, I often see this one fishing because it's got the bright red berries. So if you're going along the shore, you, you'll see it on the shore because um, because of the berries stick out so much. And it's quite common in Michigan along, um, you know, lakes and stuff. We've got here this little vine. Look at those leaves. They look like a spade. So we remember we saw this before. This is Solanum dulcamara. Um, there's no berries here, but the, the leaves are super distinct. And you can see it's a good vine. It's kind of choking this out. Uh, well, here's the here's the berries for it. They, they haven't turned red yet. Um, there's so in this shrubby area, there's willows, the long skinny leaves. There's mixed in here somewhere are blueberries. They're kind of getting choked out by other stuff. Um, I'd know that, that there's blueberries here because. When I come early in the summer, there's blueberries on them. So that, that's the way you'd really know it. So it, it, it's not one you could easily identify this time of year. But um, blueberries and vaccinium, both vaccinium, um, and I don't give you the genus for blueberry because there's multiple ones, or not the species for blueberries. So blueberries and cranberries, both vaccinium, are good economic plants from a bog. Um, that's the natural habitat for, for both. Okay, sphagnum for that matter is a good economic one for a bog. If we come um, right here, this is this is our Potentilla palustris. Um, to me, I remember this one because it looks like marijuana, the, the, the leaves, but it doesn't really because remember marijuana's got palmate leaves this has pinnate leaves, but otherwise the serrations look like marijuana. And um, so good potentillas. There are some, um, and I know this one because it's grown in the water. So potentilla palustris, it's just the one in the water. There's right here the heart-shaped leaves. This is um, um, cala, cala palustris. So... Um, it's an Aeraceae, so it would have a spathe and spadex. I don't see any spathe and spadexes here, but it's so it's related to the Peltandra. Um, and I'll put on blackboard one with the spathe and spadex is kind of your homework, and that'll make it easier. There's a little bit of Bidens here. They don't have the big, they're not developed enough yet, 
to see the the beggar's tick on it. There's a there's a carex. Here's a a nice carex. Um, there's a a male spikelet here, and then the female spikelet. And remember, carex will have the perigenium. So if I I don't really want to tear this apart because it's kind of pretty and people like it. Um, but if I tore it apart, it would have the big perigenium that protects the the akeen. And um, oh, we should do this tree real quick. The um, this is going to be a hickory, and um, and I know that because it's got opposite, or sorry, it's got oddly pinnate leaves. And they're alternate leaves, so uh, there are several hickories right in Michigan. Um, I'm just having you know the genus. They're mostly not wetland, but there is one species that is kind of wetland, but it's quite rare. But hickories are are fairly common in Michigan. Uh, so let's stop there.